Kylie Deeks. Kylie Deeks killed Sam Holden. Obviously I'm missing something. Kylie Deeks and Sam Holden are one and the same person. Yes, they are, but it's a lot more complicated than that. Sam Holden was a loving, caring wife and mother who created a new life for herself, far removed from the one she knew when she was Kylie Deeks. So when Johnny Cooper came to town, everything she worked for, the loving husband, the happy family, the white picket fence, was threatened. And that is when Kylie Deeks came back onto the scene. It was Kylie who killed Johnny Cooper. And it was Kylie who went down to the city to persuade her son to run away with her. And that's when she knew her life was at its lowest ebb, when she saw her own son was terrified of her. I hate to contradict your little theory, especially when you're on a roll, but I've already spoken to Rory. He said his mother never came anywhere near him. He lied. Mm. Oh, is that such a shock? I mean, the poor boy did what he's always done. He covered for his mother. And you've got proof of this? Yes. I took a young friend of mine to visit Rory, where he admitted the truth. He said his mother had come down and asked him to run away with her. And he turned her down. That's hearsay. Oh, well, I'm sure the boy will swear to it. And that is why Sam decided to kill herself. It was the final rejection. What else did she have to live for? Oh, I'm sorry, Morag. There's way too much evidence for this to be anything but murder. And that's exactly the way she wanted you to think. I mean, this woman had a clever criminal mind. After Rory rejected her, she thought her life was over, but she wasn't going to go down without giving a fight. Her main fear was that Martha and Jack would get back together again, and she certainly didn't want that to happen. So she made sure that if she had to die, it would not be in vain. And she would make certain that Martha and Jack would spend the rest of their lives rotting in jail. I'm assuming you've got proof to back this up. Because without it, what you're telling me here is nothing but a fairy story. Oh, I know exactly what happened that night. Once she'd made up her mind, she came back here to put her plan into action. And I believe she broke into Roman's house to take hairs from Martha's brush. And while she was there, she grabbed a piece of Martha's notepaper so she could write a note to leave in the car. But on her way out, something unexpected happened. She ran into Martha which took her by surprise. Not one to let an opportunity pass, she used it to gather vital DNA under her fingernails. In order for her plan to work, though, she had to convince people that she had everything to live for, and that is when she called Jazz Curtis to meet her at Stewart's Point. Jazz, I know what I'm doing. I just, once you give me that cash, I can go somewhere else, I can start a new life with Rory. Sam, if you run now, you're gonna be running forever. What kind of a life is that? I don't that? have a choice, Jazz. Please, do this for me. If you can't do it for me, do it for Rory. If I go to jail, it's going to destroy him. Sam lied to Jazz. She said Rory was going to run away with her. In fact, everything she said was a lie. Because all she wanted to do was convince people that she was in no state of mind to end it all. She then wrote the note on the stolen paper, making sure her handwriting looked different enough to have been faked. And I'm sure an expert will confirm that. She then took all the evidence and placed it in the car before she rang Rachel for help. She chose a place on the beach where she knew Rachel could find her. She made it look like there'd been a struggle. She even left her own blood in the sand to make it seem as if she'd been harmed. After she saw Rachel, she went back to the car to make sure everything was in place. And then she slipped into the night. And that is when I saw her. It was dark. I couldn't follow her, but I do know where she went. When she was far enough away, she prepared the shot of heroin. Just before she injected herself, she took the bung out of the boat. She was dead before it sank, and that's why she had no water in her lungs. She didn't drown. Everything had gone as she'd planned. She wanted it to look like murder, and it did look like murder. I'm curious. Why did you bother going to all the trouble of constructing this elaborate theory? Because I know my niece is innocent and I will not see her go to jail for someone else's act of revenge. Sam had lost her husband, she was rejected by her son and she had nothing else to live for. But it's just a theory. It was a theory until I thought about it. 
and then I went looking. And I learned from a local fisherman that a dinghy had been stolen that night. And I knew I was right. I'm sorry, but I think there might be a couple of little points you're forgetting. The missing dinghy. Where is it? Unless it's found at the bottom of the bay, it proves nothing. I will find it. And there were bruises on Sam's arms, indicating she was forcibly held down at some point before she died. Now, she didn't struggle with herself, so how do you explain that? If she managed to engineer everything else, I'm sure there's an explanation for the bruises as well. Well, so now I'm meant to drop everything and start a new investigation that could potentially make me the laughing stock of the entire police force. Is that it? Is there anything else I'm missing? Yeah. What about the part when you become an even bigger laughing stock when you charge two innocent people? Morag, I understand why you're so passionate about this, and you know how much I admire your tenacity, but honestly, can't you see? Martha Mackenzie and Jack Holden had the motive, the means, and the opportunity to kill Sam, and I already have forensic evidence to support that. And that will be in my brief to the DPP. really want to end your career like this? I mean, such a long and distinguished record. And instead of leaving on a high, you will be known as the detective who got it all wrong. You're only as good as your last job, Ross, and everyone will think you've been forced into retirement. Morag, I would love you to be right about this, but you've got to look at it from my point of view. Oh, yeah, the superiors are laying down the law, and you are under pressure to make arrests, right? Murders of policemen's wives, they make everyone nervous. Since when did you let politicians and the top brass dictate to you? I'm not immune to pressure. 48 hours. Just two days, Ross, please. 24 hours. That's the best I can do. Not a minute more. At this time tomorrow night, you're not back here with hard evidence on the boat and the bruises, then I'm sorry, I'm going to have to charge Holden and Mackenzie. But in the meantime, you will let Martha go without charge? Mm -hmm. Ross, I know you're going out on a limb for me, um, but I will find you the evidence, I promise. And if you don't? Martha and Jack are innocent, and I will prove it to you. I hope you can, Morak. For your sake and for theirs, I truly hope you can. <laughs>